this series of videos, we will be looking at topics in Algebra 1. In this lesson, we will be looking at how to translate between English phrases and math symbols. Hi everyone. So here, what we're going to do here is we're going to take just a, a moment and talk about translating. Okay. Uh, it's just one of those kind of difficult things to do. I mean, and it's it's it comes natural for for me and probably your other teachers here uh, to be able to translate between English and and the math kind of symbology that we we use here. Uh, this is because of years of experience, okay? But um, just some things that we want you to be able to to do uh, to to make sense of of like word problems, for example. And we all know that the word problems can be horrible. At the in that just being able to go from the word problem to the math. Usually solving the math isn't the problem, it is all in the translation. So we just want to talk about a little bit about that uh, with this lesson here. So we're going to translate this into an algebraic expression. Uh, the difference between 9 and 3, or, or sometimes you'll see it written as the difference of 9 and 3. And when we say that, when it's written like this, typically we want 9 to be that first number and 3 will be the second number. So we want this to be 9 minus, remember the word difference means subtraction, 9 subtract 3. Okay, now over here, the quotient of 15 and 5. Okay, well the word quotient is requesting the, the result when we perform a division. So 15 and 5, okay, and when it's written like this, the quotient of 15 and 5, we want 15 divided by 5. Okay, or you might want to write it uh, vertically, 15 divided by 5. They both mean the same thing. Sometimes it's easier to work with it horizontally than it is vertically, but that's kind of circumstance related. Okay, now we are going to take 5 from 8. We're going to take 5 from 8. So this is take implies a subtraction. Okay, now for a couple of our basic operations, order is significant here. In subtraction, order is significant. I am going to take 5 from 8. So I start with 8, and I'm removing 5. So it's got to be 8 minus 5. Now you're going to see this in a couple of these, that oftentimes the difficulty here is when people read this, they, they understand that that's subtraction, but they'll think that it's 5 minus 8 simply because, and only because, the 5 comes first in the, in the description here. But I'm taking 5 from 8. 8 is the pre-existing value here. Okay. X decreased by 10. Well, again, decreased means subtraction. But X is being decreased by this value. So we start with X and we are losing 10. So x subtract 10, decreased by 10. Okay. Half of 12. All right, half of 12. Now, this can be written in two different ways, and, and I've often watched students struggle with this and not realize that they're the same thing. Half of. Now, when written like this, in many cases, that word of implies multiplication. So you might write this as half, of 12, right? And when we write with parentheses like that, that means multiplication. Half of 12. Okay, or you could write that as 12 divided by 2 because half of 12, when you write half is like this coefficient. Okay, in fact, you might even, you could even drop the, the brackets around that first expression, that, sorry, that first factor there and just make that half of 12. They mean the same thing. 12 divided by 2 is the same as half of 12, okay? Or, you know, 12 divided by 2, okay? But, but regardless, what, what I often see people struggle with is, is they'll, they'll pause and look at me and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, you mean half of 12 is the same as 12 divided by 2? And it's, it's, it's funny because when you say it out loud, that probably is a moment of, well, yeah, of course it is. But sometimes you need that moment uh, just to, to get clarity on that, okay? Yeah, it is. Half of 12 is 12 divided by 2, okay? 7 less than A. Okay, well, less, again, implies subtraction as an operation. Than A, 7 less than A, okay, 
this less than implies that a is the pre-existing value and we are reducing it by 7, so a minus 7. And again, this is one of those questions that's often read as, or students will often write that as 7 minus a just because they, they see subtraction in there, they, they recognize that subtraction, but the order throws them off. You, you have to read that really carefully, 7 less than a. Now, if it had just simply said, and I, and I want to make sure that this is clear, if this had said 7 less a, that means that 7 is the pre-existing value and we are losing a from it. Okay, so maybe that's a good, a good kind of a comparison to have there. 7 less than a, a exists first, then we're losing 7. 7 less a, 7 is the pre-existing value and we're going to lose a from that. All right, the sum of y and 2. Okay, well, I don't think that's probably going to throw too many people off there. That's just y plus 2. The product of m and 4. And usually people are pretty good about that. We know that the word product means multiplication. Okay, so m multiplied by 4 or because order doesn't matter, and it's going to look better if you write it like this, 4m. Okay, and in fact, uh, when I go through this, I, I tend to think there's a, a pretty factor in mathematics. And if you make the mathematics look pretty, oftentimes problems are a lot easier to solve. Now, now you, you might not believe me right at first here, but after you go through a bunch of these uh, the questions and a lot of the lessons that I've, I've gone through, uh, you'll see that that actually is, is true. As soon as you make things look prettier, you see patterns a lot clearer. Writing it like this is not incorrect. Writing it like this is better. <laughs> okay, 4m is the coefficient. And you might even put parentheses around the, the two factors there if you want. n increased by 1. Okay, well, I think we can all agree that increased by means addition. So it's simply going to be n plus 1. 11 squared. Okay, squared... Okay, squared means multiplied by itself. So that's 11 multiplied by 11, which is equal to 11 to the exponent 2. Okay, now that is different than this next one, twice w. Okay, twice w means 2, sorry, not 2, I have no idea where I got that from. W plus W, which is the same as two W's, okay? I've got two of them, so I can multiply, right? Instead of doing that addition, I can speed that up using multiplication here. Twice W. This is 11 squared. That's 11 11's. This is twice W. That's two W's. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm trying to connect these is because I've seen students go back and forth with this, especially, especially this one twice w, interpreting that as, as either the square or the square as being twice w, okay? They do that quite a bit, but they are different. Just like uh, if, you, if you double, like, like another way of writing this is, is uh, w, and this is gonna, <laughs> I probably should have chosen a different variable here, w doubled, <laughs> okay, w doubled. Well, that's, again, that's two w's there. Let's take a look at B. That's supposed to be a B, not a 6. B cubed, okay, is B times B times B. So there's three factors of B. B cubed is just a short way of writing that. Now, in this little section right here, these last two questions, um, or these last two expressions, are, I think, very significant uh, for math that you might do later, okay? Uh, so please pay attention to the difference between the two uh, of these that I'm about to finish with. Now, I'm, there's a lot more that we could do in terms of translating, um, but I just wanted to go through some of the more popular ones uh, or the more the kind of the bigger issues so that you you've seen that. Okay. Anyway, the last two here before we take a look at this in a different direction here are these ones: x divided in half, x divided by half. Okay. They are very different, 
and yet they get treated as if they're the same all the time. X divided in half is like I've got a, a group of 10, okay, 10 fingers here, and I'm going to divide it in half. I'm splitting it into two equal groups. That's what we mean when, I say, when we say divided in half. Dividing it right down the middle into two equal groups. Well, that is simply going to be X divided by 2, okay, or written horizontally, X divided by 2. But if you divide by half, okay, that is x divided by a half, okay, or, okay, I'll write it down here, or x divided by half. Now, the difference here is significant because when I divide by a fraction, that means the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Okay, so it's going to look the same in both cases here. It's going to end up being x multiplied by the reciprocal of 1 half, which is the same as multiplying x by 2. So when I say x divided by half, interestingly enough, okay, that leads to 2x as the final expression, okay, that in, this, in simplified form, not this, but it is certainly different than this. Okay, x divided in half means x over 2, but x divided by half is going to ultimately be 2x. Okay, so please make sure you catch the significance of the, of the, the change in the wording here. In becomes by changes that question significantly. Okay, now let's take a look at basically the same thing, uh, just going in the opposite direction here. What if I've got z over 3 here? Well, this is z divided by 3. Or I could say z divided in thirds. Okay? Just like we did up here, is x divided in half is x over 2. z divided in thirds looks like, looks like that. Or one might say this is also a third of z. Okay? And this really is implying that, that this expression is the same as a third multiplied by z. Okay, all, all good. Uh, here we could say the sum of a and 5 or a increased by 5. That's probably good enough for that one. Uh, here, we've already seen there's a few different ways we could do this. We could say, we could say the difference of 12 and 7. We could say uh, 12 less 7. We could say 7, well, ah, sorry, that's not coming through clear. We could say 7 less than 12. Okay, a few things that we could say related back to that. Ah, here we could say the product because I recognize that when they're, when they're written together like that, that means multiplication. The product of 8 and n, I, you might even just write it as 8 times n. I mean, that's, that's how a lot of us would say that, right? Okay, let's see. got a few more over here. Uh, try this one here. This one here is the quotient. Whoops. <laughs> I do know how to spell that. Quotient. Of now, if I say 40 and 10, okay, usually I'm going to put the numerator first, okay, so that's why I say quotient of 40 and 10, or I could say uh, 40 divided by 10 or a tenth of 40, okay, either way here. Uh, again, we're back to subtraction, and remember, there's a few different ways that we can we can write that. Um, right here again, we might say uh, x less 3, or the difference of x and 3. And when I write it like that, when I say the difference of x and 3, remember that in that case, the whatever value comes first, that's the pre-existing one, and then I subtract the, the other value. Ah, this one right here is 3 squared. And once again, it's, it's significant here that this is 3 squared. 
Okay, that two is up in the exponent. That means repeated multiplication. Okay, this is this is not. Maybe I'll write it down here. Okay, three squared is not uh, twice three. Twice three is two times three. Okay, this is repeat. Multiplication is repeated addition. It's just a short way of doing repeated addition. Exponentiation is a shorthand way of doing repeated multiplication. They're different. Please don't look at this. And, and it is a common mistake, by the way. If, if you know kind of in your soul that this is the sort of mistake that you make, know that you're not alone. But at the same time, know that that's a mistake that, that I as a teacher and, and your teachers, we know students make this mistake. And oftentimes you'll see three squared and students will write six. They see the three, the two, immediately they multiply without thinking through that this means three multiplied by three. So like if this is a multiple choice question, oh, I guarantee if this was my, my if I was asking you to evaluate that, one of my answers would have six in there. And I'll catch a lot of people on that, even if I warn them about it. Uh, here, this is again the product of, of 10 and A, okay, or we could say 10 times A. Uh, here, we're, we're back to that other little expression here. I've got Z. Now, ask, I'll ask real quickly here, is this uh, Z divided in half or Z divided by half? Okay, I hope you realize that this is Z divided in half. Because if you were dividing by a half, it would be 1 over 2 in the denominator, and then I would have to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's... Z divided in half, or half of Z, okay, Z divided by two, in any case. And then finally over here, X raised to that exponent three, this is X cubed. Again, this is not triple X, okay, this is not X times X, this, sorry, this is X times X times X, this is not three X's. Okay, uh, three X's would be X plus X plus X. That's typically how you would describe that. Uh, this is X multiplied by X multiplied by X, okay? So X cubed. Same sort of thing as down here. We're just increasing that exponent by one. Okay, anyway, I hope that helps offer a little bit of clarity to a couple of, of um, vocabulary issues. Uh, I know that it's not... Without a lot of practice on this, uh, it's, it's still one of those things that people struggle with. Even if you have this explained to you and you understand it, it's easy to fall into some, some very simple traps here, particularly with subtraction. Okay, Again, really, really common one is to, is to make a mistake here. 7 less than A, very easy to flip that around. I've seen it done a lot. Uh, it's very easy to make a mistake with exponentiation and think that 3 squared means 3 times 2, but again, it's not... Uh, and another, again, really, really popular mistake to make is misunderstanding x divided in half versus x divided by half. I hope this helps. I hope it gives you something to think about.